Most of us aren't familiar with opera. In fact, most of us wouldn't be able to name a classical piece off of the top of our heads. However, most people will be able to recognize this. That is the habanera from Carmen, one of the most recognizable tunes that opera has produced to date. Carmen was an opera set in Spain in the 1830s, in the city of Seville. The story is about a fiery, free-willed Spanish gypsy woman named Carmen. She seduces the corporal Don Jose, who falls madly in love with her. Carmen later spurns him for the dashing matador Escamillo. Ignoring the predictions of the cards, she is ultimately betrayed and stabbed to death by Don Jose in a fit of jealous rage. For now, let's talk a little bit about the man behind this opera. George Alexandre Cesar Leopold Bizet, or Bizet for short, was a French composer who might have surpassed all the active composers in French had it not been for his untimely death at the age of 36. Carmen was Bizet's last opera, and he was actually inspired by a novel of the same name, also written by a Frenchman. Bizet was devastated to know that his work was not received well. Sadly, he died three months after the premiere. Even when he was on his deathbed, he still believed that he had created the worst opera in history. He would unfortunately never live to see Carmen become the timeless classic that we now know it as. Now, going back to romanticism, one of the many traits of romantic music is a connection or relation to nature as a metaphor. This can be seen, for example, in Habanera, when Carmen sings, which translates to love is a rebellious bird. There are also other elements such as mysticism. For example, um, Carmen is a gypsy, and gypsies have always been associated with magic and the unknown. She also consults her reading cards, which foretell her death. She falls into despair as she proclaims that the cards never lie. In terms of the actual music, Bizet used the Phrygian mode, which gives it a very exotic sound typically attributed to Spanish flamenco music. But he also frequently includes the augmented second, which is taken from Arabic or Middle Eastern music. For example, in the, habanera, in the habanera theme, you can see that there is a flat 13, sharp 4th, and augmented 2nd. Another aspect of Romanticism is the idea of programmatic music. That is, music that serves to convey a story or idea. The Chromaticism in the habanera theme not only serves to add spice and a type of flirtiness and mysteriousness to the melody, but it also makes it seem like the character of Carmen is singing that there is more to her than meets the eye. Speaking of the music, I'd like to move on to the main focus of today's video. I will be comparing the Carmen fantasies written by Franz Waxman and Pablo de Sarasate, both for solo violin, but there are also versions for solo violin and piano. <laughs> by the way, what happens when you go to the mamang and you order sate and the ane brings you the wrong sate? <coughs> both Sarasate and Waxman had their own interpretations on Carmen. Although both versions borrowed heavily from the original opera and were definitely virtuosic works, they were really quite different. Pablo de Sarasate was a Spanish violinist and composer of the Romantic period who wrote the Carmen fantasy on themes from the original Carmen opera in 1882. The Carmen Fantasy would go on to become one of his most well-known works. Franz Waxman, on the other hand, was a German-American composer of film music, who actually wrote the Carmen Fantasy for the 1946 movie Humoresque, for which he received an Academy Award nomination for. He was also a good friend of Yasha Heifetz, the legendary violinist, and he initially wrote the Carmen Fantasy for him to play in the movie. Although both pieces by Waxman and Sarasate are considered to be virtuosic and have been played in many violin competitions, the general consensus is that the Waxman's is significantly harder and is slightly shorter in duration. 
you can actually see the difference immediately in both versions in the beginning itself. For the Sarasate, the, the piece begins with the slow Aragonese, which in the opera is actually what they played in the transition from the third act to the fourth act. <laughs> The Waxman, on the other hand, blasts off with a virtuosic show of extremely ornamented playing with arpeggios, fast runs and trills, and very expressive playing. Generally speaking, the main difference between the Sarasate and the Waxman version is that the Sarasate is definitely more thematic and focuses less on the virtuosity of the performer and rather the piece itself. The Waxman version also takes more creative liberties such as this section. After supposedly ending the habanera movement, the theme is brought out again, almost like a gentle reminder, but instead of the B natural that you expect, it goes to a B flat, giving it a very different color. Also many techniques used in both the versions that require great control and skill from the violinists, such as double stops and chords, <laughs> harmonics, pizzicato, and glissando. There are also many fast passages and wide interval leaps. which require immense accuracy and technical skill. But ultimately what makes both these pieces so difficult to play is that the violin has to emulate the singing voice. Quite literally, you have to make your instrument sing and not just play the violin. This is, this is good violin playing, not singing. In conclusion, the Sarasate version is more thematic, more defined in its sections and movements, and also because it was composed many years before the Waxman version, it's more traditional and translates itself better to the violin. The Waxman, on the other hand, is more focused on the technical proficiency of the violinist, is definitely more unorthodox and modern in its scoring, and it also takes more creative liberties with the music. And with that, I'd like to end my video here. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.